So hello and welcome you all to Sale to MDS Tendel Academy. So Spiran, today we are here with the part 4 of the SPSC past paper discussion along with important concepts. Those who have not watched the remaining 3 part, they can watch by clicking on i button above as well as the link is given in description box. So Spiran, let's get started with the current video and remember those who want to join test series for the SPSC exam, they can DM me. So, Let's see the question one of the day. So color temperature of light source for shade selection process should be how much? It should be around 5500 Kelvin. The color temperature means what is split? It means mean wavelength of the ambient light, means the light which is present. Most often we consider light at this temperature as white light. What if the dental unit lamp is there? The average temperature is around 3800 Kelvin and ideal temperature for shade selection is 5000 Kelvin. Remember Esperon, whenever you are answer any question, you also note on such word like ideal also. Okay, and for shade selection, this three light can be used D65, D50 and D55. So now a patient is there after post cementation, all duty, the, pa the pain is there on biting. The reason is what? It is because of sensitivity to cement. Now if we compare the base metal alloy to normal metal casting alloy, remember base metal alloy are more easily hardened. Let's see the importance of each. Remember base metal alloy are known as non noble metals. Why? Because of their influence on physical property, control of the amount and type of oxidation or their strengthening effect. This base metal are reactive with their environment. That's why they were known as base metal. And they can also be used to protect an alloy from corrosion, which is a passivation process. Although they are frequently referred as non precious the preferred term is base metal. Example, you should remember chromium, cobalt, nickel, iron, copper and manganese. Remember there can be one question, which is the best corrosion resistant material? Yes, base metals are corrosion resistant, but the gold is the best corrosion resistant material. Let's see noble metals. They have in bases of inlays, crown and bridges because of their resistance to corrosion in the oral cavity. We have eight noble metals, gold, platinum, palladium, rhodium, ruthenium, iridium, osmium and silver. How in the oral cavity silver is more reactive and therefore is not considered as a noble metal. Of the eight noble metals, four are of major importance in our dental casting color. They are the gold, platinum, palladium and silver. Why? Because they have FCC crystal structure. It's a face centered cubic crystal structure. And all are white except for gold. Now, question six of the day, purple pain is there. Either spontaneous or elicited by an irritant. That suggests linger for more than 10 to 15 seconds. So it means what? It is a case of irreversible pulpitis. Let's see the difference between reversible and the irreversible pulpitis. Remember the word for this has been changed nowadays. We, instead of reversible, we are using the word symptomatic pulpitis and asymptomatic pulpitis. So please, they can ask examination, what is the current name for the irreversible or the irreversible pulpitis. So in reversible, we have a sensitive to mild discomfort. Irreversible, the pain might be present or absent. Irreversible, the pain is of very short duration and not that much severe. And episodes are infrequent. Whenever irreversible, the history of pain is there. The pain can be moderate to severe and is often spontaneous in nature. Reversible pulpitis seldom hurts to bite unless tooth are fractured or restoration is loose and occlusion is affected. And here the pain is increasing in frequency, often to the point of being continued. Reversible pulpitis could result in irreversible if source is not removed and in irreversible the pain usually lingers, especially with increasing episode. Reversible pulpitis symptoms automatically subside if you remove the cause, but in irreversible you require an analgesic. Sometimes you might be able to identify specific or multiple stimuli and in irreversible sometimes pain may radiate or is diffused or might be localized in nature. So please remember this important difference between your reversible and irreversible pulpitis. Now which is the most effective and most tolerable topic of red? Focus on the word effective and tolerable. It is your APF gel. Which is the principal hormone for calcium regulation that is your parathyroid hormone. Let's see the regulation of calcium homeostasis. So three hormones are involved, vitamin D, parathormon and calcitonin and they act on three target organs. Remember aspirin, that's the intestine, bone and kidneys. Then intrinsic factor which is essential for absorption of vitamin B12 in ileum is secreted by viscera. It is secreted by parietal cells. Let us see how the absorption occurs. 
First remember, your intrinsic factor is a glycoprotein, the molecular weight around 4500. So vitamin B12 will combine with the intrinsic factor. So they will combine with this intrinsic factor, forming a complex that resists digestion by GID enzyme. And this complex is absorbed at terminal ileum by pinocytosis. And vitamin B12 is transported to the liver where it is stored. So this is the process or mechanism of absorption of vitamin B12. Then which of the following enzyme is responsible for dissolving blood clot? That is your plasmin. Now Bernice's anemia is caused by the malabsorption of what? It is caused by malabsorption of vitamin B12. Now as you remember, intrinsic factor is required for vitamin B12 absorption. If deficiency is there, it can cause malabsorption of vitamin B12. Now which of the following is not the prominent toxic effect of mercury? That is loosened teeth. Other all three are prominent toxic effect of mercury. Now immediate danger should be preferably relined after how many days? Mostly 5 to 6 months post extraction. So the best option here is 5 month plus 1 month post extraction. Then the incisal edge of maxillary teeth should touch the wet or dry line of the lower lip while creating which sound? While creating F and V sound. The incisal edge of your teeth should touch the lower lip dry line. Now it's a question about PPS, that's a posterior palatal seal for maxillary denture. Remember, is placed 3 mm posterior to vibrating line. Now let us see PPS. It is divided in two separate but confluent area based upon anatomic boundary. So this is a post palatal seal which extend medially from one tuberosity to another tuberosity. Laterally, there is a pterygomaxillary seal which extend to a pterygomaxillary notch continuing for 3 to 4 mm anterior laterally approximating the mucogingival junction. So this area you can see as present is a clinical junction of hard and soft palate. This is your anterior vibrating line which is produced by the sound ah. And the C is the anatomical junction of your hard and soft palate. It is posterior vibrating line. So please just remember many MCQ uh, can be made from this slide about first this three anterior and posterior vibrating line about clinical junction and also about the PPS extension and pterygomaxillary seal. So as friend, that was all for today. See you with the part five of the video. If anybody want to join exam series for government dental exam, maybe any your HPSC, GPSC, KPSC or need MDS test series, you can contact me. Till then, as friend, take care and keep on working.